So welcome ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to uh, some more FIFA 22 news. And uh, yeah, this one's going to be a little bit more juicy, alright? There's going to be no whining in this, don't worry about it. Look, I put that trailer video out as much as, yeah, they put the same thing last week, but it still was short to the point. And my whole point of that video was like, well, you basically just showed the same as last week. There was nothing new to really entice me. I'd already seen it. That was really my only point. I wasn't nitpicking for the sake of it, but whatever. Anyway, we are going to keep it to the point today. And uh, we'll have some positives to talk about. Because look, the facts are EA are doing good things. I can't say they aren't, all right? I, I can't. I've never had a problem with EA and FIFA off the pitch. It's always been on the pitch. I haven't enjoyed the gameplay. Maybe this shit will change. And honestly, there's a snippet of gameplay on this you guys are going to see. And I will say, like, the foot planting, the physics, how slowed down it is, it looks a much better polished game than what we've had. And obviously, with it being true next-gen, well, it, it's going to be a different, hopefully, a different kettle of fish on the field. So let's dive into this, the FIFA 22 gameplay deep dive pitch notes. We're not going to go through it all because there is a lot of information. I really wish Konami would take note of this. I mean, they never have done, but... You give EA credit where it's due when they put out these these notes telling you what's been done, what's been enhanced, refined, what's new, what's old, what's this, that. It's nice to see. So let's scroll through it, right? We've got designing FIFA 22 gameplay. Um, now, take note that the things that say NG next to them will be next gen, as you would expect, right? So the hyper motion tech is there, next gen, next gen. Um, all of this stuff is competitive settings, deeper match analysis is not on next gen. Well, it's on every every console. If there's no NG next to it, folks, it means it's on everything, basically. Uh, explosive sprint is on both. Uh, true ball physics is on both as well. I guess that's good. Um, you've got composed ball control only on next gen. Uh, and we'll kind of just, yeah, scroll through. So that's basically it, right? So we've all spoken about the hyper motion tech. We're not going to worry too much about that. They talk about the advanced 11 v 11 match capture technology. Um, there's a little video we can run here. And uh, yeah, that's just kind of showcasing what they were doing. And then they take that. I guess it is kind of cool when you see, when you actually see it come to life. When you, you know, you have the 11 v 11 and then it turns into some actual gameplay footage. I guess that's pretty cool. So you can see there. I mean, the technology they have nowadays, it's its mind-blowing. I mean, I'm not going to say Konami are really on the same level. I don't think they have the same tech as, as EA because they just can't compete with them. Um, but there you go. There's the before. And there's the after. So let's have a look here. Let's see. Okay, so let's run that again because that see, that's quite interesting to watch. So there it is. There's the before. So he kind of slows down, and then when you play on after, it's just a much, it's a much smoother transition. It's not sort of stop, start, stop, start. So there you go. Uh, we've got the machine learning uh, and machine learning flow. Let's go ahead and play this video. Cool, blimey, what is all the uh, craziness going on the flow? So we've used, or we're able to use 8.7 million new frames of data to train a neural network outside of the game with as much information and detail as available. In FIFA 22, this has led to the development of the ML Flow. There you go. High-tech stuff that we really don't know too much about. As long as it looks good in-game, I don't think we're going to complain. Uh, there it is. The mask, though, uh, without flow. Let's have a look here. So this shows you what it's like basically last year. So with the flow... He kind of readjusts his feet. So yeah, if you kind of look at it, yeah, it's... You can see that. See, that 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 has been a problem, as you can see. If you kind of really slow this down, you can't really do it like that. But you can see how his feet... No, that's not it. Where is it? You, you see, Watch his right leg. You see the right leg? Yeah, and that's the skating problem. There it is. It kind of... It's not transitioning well. But with the ML flow, you can see that he's he's adapts his... See, there you go. That's something... Having a look at it now... Yeah, I, I like that because that's... As I say, there, that's the skatiness in a nutshell. Right there, that's the problem. So with them adding this machine learning flow tech, you can see that that, that isn't a problem. He adjusts his feet accordingly and that gets rid of that skatey problem that we've always had. All right, fair enough. 
Um, so new in FIFA 22. We've obviously got the full team authentic motion. As we mentioned before, 4,000 new animations. These new animations help improve immersion by adding variety to the gameplay experience, including set pieces, shooting, skill moves, passes, player movement, player reactions, celebrations, controlling the ball, two-player headers, falls, get-ups, dribbling, animation idols, shoulder challenges, seal out some more. Oh, blimey, that's... Uh... That's a lot of stuff. Many animations were captured with the new advanced 11v11 match capture and thus are exclusive, obviously, to next gen. There's the old blower. Um, tactical AI. We rewrote the intelligence and tactical approach of all 22 players, emphasizing their roles and personality and teamwork. Players better understand their teamwork or their teammates, sorry, uh, and how to work together and also better understand opponents, tactics and movements. Alrighty dighty. So it's like, in my mind now, I'm thinking like, a lot of this stuff they're talking about is next gen. And it's like, what was the power of the PS4 and the Xbox sort of negating some of the possibilities that we had? Obviously, yes. Yes, you need better technology to be able to produce, you know, higher quality in a game. You know, when you, you see some of the stuff on the PS5 now and the new animations, it's insane. Obviously, you can't do that on PS4. So... I really do like the look of this though. This this right here without the Master League or Master League. The ML flow and with that with it, it showed me that that skating issue, I don't know, that they, they've also kind of addressed it. Not 100%, it's still going to be there, but it looks far far better. Okay, now this is I think the snippet of gameplay we're going to go ahead and watch. I want you guys to watch this. I want to watch it as well. And when you actually see it in person, like, just the way the players seem to take, you know, it, it does look more realistic. I will say that much. It's a slow down pace. Like, I love that there. The way he got that ball down. Have a look at this again. There's the switch. Now, watch this. Ready? That's nice. You know, nice little chest. Gets it on the feet. Then they swing it around the other way. I mean, it does look smooth. I will say, it does look smooth. I think it's just going to be playing the game itself and we get an actual feel for it. But... Yeah, actually, see, see, why didn't they put that in the trailer? You know, stuff like that. I'd be like, oh, okay, this is actually looking a little bit more respectable. So, your defenders can operate more as a unit with the new tactical AI. Uh, maintain the shape of the formation when moving across the pitch. Cover vacant spaces. Mark each defending zone accordingly. And bring more authenticity to the overall defensive shape. It's good to see. Um, so defensive work rates and fatigue have a significant impact on the defensive positioning. All right, we'll take note to that. That's more of a simulation thing. Uh, and placing any player in that, uh, placing any player that is not a centre back in a centre back position will negatively impact their defensive positioning. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Likewise, you know, play someone as a right back who isn't a right back, he's going to be a little bit confused. Uh, their goal for tactical AI is to ensure players have a balanced experience in terms of AI teammates and will keep monitoring FIFA 22 to make sure there are good ways to break defense down as well as good ways to counter. All right, so as you saw, that bit of gameplay there was quite... It's quite good, I will say. It looked good. But that's obviously on next gen. You know, I, if you're on older tech, I, you know, I don't know how well it's going to play out. If you want the best experience, folks, you're going to have to invest in the next-gen console. I mean, that's the facts. Uh, competitive settings and Master Switch. What is Master Switch? So, as we mentioned at the start of this deep dive, one of the big pillars of FIFA 22 is focusing on aiming for gaming fairness uh, by eliminating potentially frustrating gameplay situations. We continue to have feedback sessions with pro gamers or pro players. Okay, not really relevant that much. So, the mandatory competitive settings changed by the competitive master switch are uh, Contextual dribbling is off, auto clearance off, auto flares off, auto shots off, assisted headers off, jockey is manual, and through ball pass assistance is semi. Modes where competitive settings are always active will be right there for you guys. I mean, I'm an offline guy, so for me, you know, I'm going to tweak them. I turn off agile dribbling. I don't like using that. I turn off auto clearance, auto flare. I don't use those anyway. Um, in the controller settings screen, players will notice a new competitive master switch option. And once it's enabled, certain settings will be turned off and on and grayed out, preventing players from changing them individually. 
Hmm. All right, fair enough. Once again, at least they're evolving EA. They're trying things out. All right, deeper match analysis. Something I wish, you know, Konami would uh, follow suit because we're still getting some of the broken worst man of the match ratings for the last decade. Um, with a complete revamp of the match facts and player performance screens, you are now equipped with more match data to help you better understand how you and your players, as well as your opponents, are performing. So, starting with the match facts, the uh, new visuals help you compare performance between you and your opponent in the revamped, revamped summary screen. You can also get more detailed breakdown of key aspects of play, including possession, shooting, passing, and defending. So there we go. Hmm. Can make this bigger? Yes, we can. So you've got the possession, the shots, expected goals, passes, tackles. It tells you your uh, dribbling success rate, and then you can go through all the different sections. That's all right, you know, it's something different, just to, to see how well you do. Oh, here we go. We can, we, can, we can go through them. All right, so there's the possession for you. Shows you the old uh, heat map. Of where you've been running about you've got your shooting where you're taking shots from passing total passes you've done completed passes ground lob through lofted then you can obviously use the the right stick as you can see here to flick through so you've got passing distribution and then you can change accordingly to whatever else there is uh defending Standing tackles and all that spiely. Uh, once again, all tackles down here, so you can adjust that with the right stick. Okay, I mean, it looks pretty deep. I mean, that is, you know, a very deep match fact screen. A lot of information. Um, the all-new player performance screen. I've got an itchy eye. Let's you, uh, let you know how each player has contributed to the team in the summary. Uh, as well as providing a detailed match breakdown of their own performances in possession, shooting, passing, and all that. So, once again, if we have a look here, um, can't really see. Let me pull that one over for you guys. So, there's Mbappe. Tells you his goals, his assist, his match rating. Okay, and then you can go through and see where he was in possession. You can have a look at how many shots he's had and where they've gone in from passing i mean this is all just added extra i wouldn't really use this myself a whole lot i mean unless you want to critique your own kind of performance uh, but just having this in there i mean you're not going to complain about it are you that's not look if i'm complaining about that then you know i'm complaining for the sake of complaining folks but <laughs> i'm not complaining and moaning about fifa for the sake of it trust me if if i saw some positives from fifa and i enjoyed the gameplay i'd play it you know, I've just obviously always favoured Pez more because I like the gameplay. Unfortunately, Pez lacks in a lot of the other areas. Right, kinetic air battles. And I know I go on about a Pez a lot, even in a FIFA video. I'm sorry, it's just me. I, I like to compare both football games. We only have two football games. we got to compare them. So, kinetic air battles. For FIFA 22, we use full team authentic motion animations to enhance player interactions when battling for air balls. So, let's have a look at this. There might be a, a before and after that they do, or maybe not. I don't know. So, there they are. Jumping for it. That must be quite fun. Just go on. Have some fun on the old beanbag. Run around uh, and jump through. So, there you go. That's them doing it in real time. And then that's them in-game. As you can see, you know, it's basically... It's, it's cool, isn't it? When you think about it. All these different animations... I mean, I've got 4,000 of them. I mean, seeing the same ones over and over and over again, it is repetitive and boring. So, it's a, it's a plus. It's a, I'm going to keep this video positive, folks, all right? I'm going to keep it positive. And these are positive notes. You can't really slag this off because, you know, it, it is all good stuff. Right, the explosive sprint. This is my only, uh, probably my only real concern is because this is kind of a cool-down phase when they spoke about it last week in the... Uh, in the interview they had. So explosive sprint rewards timing and your intelligence on the ball. So if you're not intelligent, forget it. Giving players a more noticeable acceleration when sprinting or when sprint is pressed during the con correct contextual or correct context. So this mechanic changes the dynamic of one-on-one -on -one situations, allowing dribblers to explode forward and leave markers behind or empowering defenders to catch up to a breakaway attacker. Explosive sprint can be triggered while already in possession of the ball or when moving without the ball. It cannot be activated during the ball approach. 
Hmm. So you can use it... Okay, so you can use it when you're not on the ball. So if you wanted one of your players to make a run, could you give it the old doodly-doodly and then the uh, in these sprints? Uh, the timing here is important, with the explosive sprint only being fully effective when facing and moving forward. If either the player is not fully moving forward or fully facing forward, which sounds complicated, uh, you only get a partial effect. Note that when we say moving forward or fully facing forward, we refer to a straight line direction that the player is player in question is facing, meaning that explosive sprints are not fully effective when using them while moving in anything but a straight line. All right, so you can't do it at an angle. You can't do it sideways, folks. You've got to be dead on uh, in a straight line, I believe. Normal acceleration rates when pressing or holding sprint will apply in all other situations. Right, let's run this video. So that's without explosive sprint. Okay. And... Uh, Okay, I see what you mean there. Yeah, so there is quite a bit of a boost, and obviously you catch him up. So let's watch that again. So he presses sprint, and as you can see, this guy's always keeping up with him. There's not a huge difference, but if you watch here, when he presses it now, boom, you can see he gets that half a yard. So it's not a huge amount. It's it's to give yourself a little bit more of an extra... Oh, what are you doing, Groovy? Sling it. Um, an extra boost uh, with the ball. I reckon they'll play around with this. I reckon they'll get player feedback and see how, you know, is it annoying? Is it not? Does it? Is it too OP? I don't know. We'll see. Um, but the option's there. All right, player humanization, which is obviously a next-gen feature as well. So, um, for example, you can see play, uh, players talk to each other on the pitch and watch teammates point to certain areas as they request passes that show a better understanding of match situations. Um, we've implemented uh, we've implemented new moments that increase immersion and humanization, like match mascots walking out with players during the entrance, a revamped uh, intro sequence with more details, new facial expressions, refreshed player uh, reactions, new ball retrieval scenes, and much more. I mean, they've done a lot, you know what I mean? When you when you read that, and Konami themselves have not changed the presentation or an entrance scene in the last ten years. Uh, it just makes me get more annoyed of Konami, to be honest. Uh, true ball physics. That's why... Just the EA release a phenomenal game gameplay-wise, and I and I will play it. Like, like, I will. I'll play Pez still, or eFootball. I'll play both! <laughs> All right, we used uh, real ball world physics... Uh, and that's not right. We used real-world ball data uh, from football matches as a foundation for FIFA 22's ball physics, helping us to improve the authenticity, is this, is it? authenticity of ball speed, swerve, air drag, air resistance, ground tra uh, fraction, friction, I'm losing my words, and rolling friction. All right, well, the best way to sum this up is having a look at the video. So there's the cross-ball physics. And then he gets the ball down, lays it across, and slots it into the goal. All right, let's have a look here. Slow mo. So there's the uh, the physics for you, and uh, just a better a better look at it. I mean, they look good, you know. I mean, that's how a ball travels in the air, um, and then obviously it bounces. And there we have it. All right, is that it? Yeah, that's just a long one. I think the better review of it was from here, wasn't it? Just seeing the switch. Yeah, I think I think the main thing here is not so much the switch, but what's the way the ball when it bounces? You see the way it bounces? It does look a lot more... I wonder if we could just slow this down. Oh, we can actually. Here we go. We put this to 0.5. And watch the ball when it hits the turf. Right here. It almost... It doesn't... It, it bounces up. It doesn't bounce like fully, you know, like boing boing. It's not the same sort of trajectory. What's the word? Trajectory. 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 So yeah, I, I that that looks decent to be fair. I, I like the bouncing animation there. Pops up a little bit just to slow the ball down, and that's obviously all based on the uh, on what you're doing, switching it or not. So there we go. Lovely. Um, attacking. So they've got new attacking tactics. We're expanding tactic. Uh, customization and instructions it's gonna be a long video folks because there's a lot to talk about here um, to enable more gameplay variety for fifa 22 one of the main differences is breaking down the attacking uh, tactics into two sections so you've got build up play and you've got chance creation this separation can enable players to have more control over play styles and team behaviors 
so there we have it we saw this on the trailer today and last week um so chance creation there that's the new the new thing they've added this year uh so let's talk about what exactly this means so for build up play you've got balanced which we, we know all about these before um balancing teams that maintain its formation you've got slow build up play players will support more in attacking uh, build up play rather than a direct approach with more runs obviously you've got long balls so you try and get in behind of the players behind the opposing back line or up to a target man for a direct attack and then you've got the fast build up play uh, pushes a lot of plays forward but if you lose the ball obviously you're going to get caught with the counter attack it's a it's a possibility right now let's move down to chance creation which is the new stuff so, tactic for balanced is used for balancing a team that maintains its formation while building up the attack. Players will offer support and make runs when they think it's the right time to do so. So that's more of a cautious approach. Um, you've got possession. Players will provide uh, more close support to the dribbler in the attacking zone rather than going on forward runs. This tactic strengthens a short passing game to patiently wait for the chance to attack, but rarely provide runs. So if you don't want runs, use possession. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I want runs. Uh, direct passing. Once the team enters the attacking zone while in possession, players will create chances by making runs for passes into space behind the opposing back line. Strikers who are in, who are fast with a good attacking positioning attribute are usually well suited for this tactic. So, you know, find the player that fits the bill. And then you've got forward runs. This tactic pushes players forward deep into the attacking areas. But once again, if you lose possession, you could find yourself open for a counter-attack. So... Nice to see they've added that. You know, it's a little bit of extra. Anything added to the tactics, I'm always always positive for because, you know, you, you want to set up tactically right. And tactics are key in football. I mean, if you don't have the right tactics, you're not going to do well. I mean, look at England, Italy. I mean, Gareth Southgate went kind of defensive in the final. It worked at the beginning of the match, but it didn't really work too later. So, yeah, that's what happens. Right, next gen, composed ball control. Um, so I'm just going to run this video instead of talking about it because it's probably better to do so or we could just talk about it while it's running um, but basically you control the ball in a more natural way uh, and that's going to add to the, the game being more of a sim uh, than obviously arcadey so the way he got the ball down there Mr. Foden himself ball comes along on the old chest gets it down takes his time has a look at it then there's a little touch with the old left leg uh, and away he goes just it's gonna be more fluid basically that, that's what they're saying uh, due to these animations cushioning the ball and resulting in more precise and accurate control than any other type of ball control animation specific chain traps are present uh, within composed ball control and can get increased chances of being performed when the following conditions are met all right so you've got the player is not sprinting there are no opponents nearby um, the left stick has to remain still uh, while performing composed ball control to allow for the animation to be completed. Okay. Um, we've got specific attributes dictate how consistently they can be performed. Uh, you've got air, ground, composed ball control, at least 70. So all this type of stuff they're adding to folks is it is very Pez-like. And, and it, it is because Pez has always had that where attributes do mean a lot more. You know, there are certain things in pairs you can't do when you're sprinting. Like, they, they will mess up. And having this stuff here, like having at least 60 ball control and 70 strength, it seems like kind of a Pez way. I'm not hating it. I'm not hating it. Uh, let's have a look at this right here. All right, so we've got 43 seconds of a, a bit of gameplay. Oh, that was a volley. So here we go. A long ball forward. So he's having a look. He, have saw, he had, a, had a quick look there, if you looked at that. Look, he had a quick glance, see if anyone's around him. Nope. As the defender's coming, now he can take that touch on the old knee and get it down. I mean, it does look nice, though, doesn't it? It does look fluid. With the animations. Once again, another, another angle for you. Yeah, just gets it down nicely, you know, touch left. That's like, it's like a, you know, like a messy type of control, isn't it? He's very left-footed, as we know. And this will all add into, type, you know, the, the, the player ID uh, that we've been missing for so, so long. So there we go. Right, controlling the ball. So they're focused on improving the player's grasp over the ball. This is going to be a long video. I will leave timestamps, folks, in the, uh, in the description if you'd like to skip through. Um, so we focused on improving the player's grasp over the ball, polishing many situations 
to more reliable obtain um, situation to more reliably obtain control of the ball be it in the air or the ground uh, they've reworked a lot of the shielding fundamentals as well with a big emphasis on player personality where strength and ball control attributes play a major part uh, on the uh, efficiency of uh, shielding uh, this also applies for contextual shielding which happens in certain situations or circumstances when obtaining possession of the ball uh, in improved control for shielding air balls all right i mean there is a lot here i really don't want to talk about everything because i will be here all day it was more about like looking at the videos um so obviously we've got passing which they focused on uh, ground passes lob passes and lob through pass system to better uh, account for context of play including opposition player positioning teammate positioning general spacing and many types of situations I've got animation refresh so new animations have been added and a major cleanup and polish of existing passing animations have been done uh, they've got ground passes lob passes and we say semi-assisted through passes uh, let's read about this as part of the competitive settings uh, semi-assisted through passes were expanded from last year to have more assistance for, for close and simple passes uh, and less assistance for far and difficult passes okay uh, the more difficult and further the pass the more precise the player's aim and power input has to be it makes sense i mean i'm a manual guy on pez so i'm used to playing those long tasty balls but that does make sense if it's a long pass you've got to be a little bit more accurate than something that's very short and sweet uh, and then you've got vision assistance as well uh, so what else we got here additional passing improvements pass transitions um, on next gen, we have the uh, through pass receiver system is able to analyze more receivers, resulting in better overall pass targets and more consistent receiver selection. It's a lot of wording, isn't it? I mean, I've got to see it on the field and actually you've got to play the game to feel this stuff, of course, but at least they're letting you know uh, what they have refined, improved and added. All right, shooting. For shooting, we focused on a variety of fixes, uh, but also made balancing changes to three key aspects. Improved shooting consistency in one-on-one -on -one situations. Um, shots from difficult situations with the defender being close to the ball carrier have reduced conversion rate to correspond with the difficulty of the situation. And shots from wide tight angles have reduced on target and on goal percentage, making them less consistent to score. Alrighty. Uh, all right, dribbling. Let's uh, let's roll it. Let's roll the camera. So this is a controlled knock-on on FIFA. Wow, blimey, that is a that is a whopper of a, a touch. Although very much Gareth Bale like. Remember, remember Gareth Bale, Real Madrid. That goal he scored, unbelievable. But like, I I mean, I'm not going to say I don't like that. That's I've got nothing wrong with having a big whopper of a touch. You know, give me freedom to do what I need to do. So this is called a super knock-on. I'm going to run it for you guys again. The knock-on ball distance is further if you flick and hold the right stick on the second flick than if you perform two consecutive quick flicks. Okay. So double flick the right stick forward. So they'll ding ding. So riding tackle touches allows you to dribble past some tackles with uh, your left stick input depending on the timing of your dribbling inputs. You've got better dribbling control at high speed with closer touches and more gradual deacceleration when releasing sprint while dribbling got quicker turns and exits uh, during dribbling they've added more player personality during dribbling as well especially when sprinting and stuff you've got the manual dink dribble touch press r3 during a dribble to perform a dink touch while dribbling perfect for avoiding the defender's leg uh, you've got contextual dink touch only enabled when the contextual agile dribbling option is turned on well we're not going to turn that on i don't know about you guys but i think that just makes it way too arcadey when they came out with that last year was it last year or the year before that to me just signaled that eo were going in a different direction and then this year it seems like they're trying to be a little bit more of a more of a sim approach i mean maybe they've decided that's the way to go and and it is it really is um skill moves like, if you want to play arcade then, I don't know, play it on a mobile. Yeah, maybe. Or change the sliders. That's why they're there. So, skill moves balance. Sing. All right, so this just talks all about skill moves. Um, and they've got new animations for directional nutmeg. Um, they've got reduced animation speed for bridge. Everyone's phoning me right now. 
Um, so yeah, skill moves and all that. Let's have a look here. Run this video. Okay, I mean, that was a very tidy... Mar I mean, that was a really nice, tidy um, Maradona. I mean, the thing about FIFA is they always do them so fast. And that, that does make it arcadey. Like, you, you can slow down... You know, the skill animations. I know on pairs they are very much pre-canned. And once they're in that animation, they're set. I mean, that looks really nice. Look at this. Boom, boom, boom. The way he touches that, it's so fluid. Even that, it's... Yeah, okay. You know, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. It looks tidy. So, new skill moves. They've got the four-touch turn. We've got the skill bridge. The first-time spin... Uh, and the scoop turn fake. Uh, and that's the controls if you guys want to learn them. Um, but obviously you don't have to worry about them right now because there's nothing to play. Right, defending. So this is the goalkeeping rewrite. Uh, when designing the new FIFA 22 goalies, we had three major areas in mind. Reliable saves, visual variety of animations, and keeper personality. The new system uses over 600 animations. Blimey, that is a lot for a goalie. Okay, well, let's run this uh, video because video is always the best way to see it. Oh, that was uh, a risky save, but he just got enough onto it. Now, obviously, this is slowed down, so it's going to look a bit... Uh, it might look a little bit odd with the goalie uh, animations. All right, fair enough. Decent save. Have you got another one you can show us? Yep, here we go. Well, there's a volley. Fair enough. And uh, another one here. Ball's whipped in. Back post. There's a header. Oh, that's a comfortable save. Okay, that was nice. That was nice. Diving header off the post. And, uh, well, nice to see the goalie got up quickly uh, and plucked that one before uh, the oncoming forward could. I mean, I would question the goalie's positioning here a little bit. Like, I don't really know why the goalie... You know what I mean? I know that's nitpicking, and I'm not going to do it in this video, or just the once. Um, but yeah, why is the goalie, you know, standing there? He really should be surely in the middle of his goal. Um, but either way, the point is to show the save, the animation, and uh, yeah, there we go. All right, we've got defensive behavior, fair and predictable outcomes. Uh, okay, this is, uh, this is going to go on and on and on. So I'm going to skim through this now, just because otherwise it's been like an hour long video which is madness you guys can always check up on the notes yourself i just kind of want to go through here and see what is uh, you know making me get excited to be honest so there's uh, balancing changes so these are all the things they've sort of balanced out improved tackling animations better ball speed and angle for successful tackles um automated or automatic blocks are now less effective when the player is not jockeying that's good because sometimes fifa does turn into a blocking sim um, controls and personality. Uh, besides trying to balance the outcomes in defending, we also made changes to controls uh, and to improve player personality. So you've got the shoulder challenges and the seal outs. Tap O or B while side by side with your opponent when defending to contextually trigger a shoulder challenge. I, I do think they do need to add a little bit more because it is. I find it hard in FIFA using the jockey. It is difficult to defend, no doubt about it. So... Giving us a few more controls is never a bad thing. So there you go. You guys can always read up about that. Uh, interceptions and disrupt interceptions. One of the biggest pieces of feedback we received in last year was about how even when you felt you're in the right place at the right time, you wouldn't always be able to intercept certain passes. True. We improved many aspects of normal interceptions on FIFA 22 and created new disrupt interceptions. So it's a mix between controlling the ball and blocking. The goal here is to disrupt the course of the pass, even if that means not retaining the ball. These disrupt interceptions can only be performed by user control players and with the left stick input directed towards the pass path instead of the ball or the receiver. Okay, once again, we need to really... You really need to get your hands on it to see the differences. Uh, teammate contain. This is a big one. This is a big one. I, I love teammate contain. I use it a ton on Pez. Um, so, I, yeah, hopefully they've done something with this. This year, we've introduced several changes. That's good. As before, you can hold the right bumper of R1 while defending in order to have an AI-controlled teammate contain the ball carrier. For FIFA 22, we've introduced teammate contain stamina. Ooh, well, that's interesting. Every player has their own contain stamina, 
that allows them to keep containing as long as it is not depleted. Okay, so they've kind of made it like a mini game. Uh, contained stamina drains while the R1 RB button is being held, and once the containing stamina or teammate runs out, they will go back to their regular instructions and enter a cooldown period for a few seconds while they cannot contain any more. Hmm, what do you guys make of that? That's that's quite. I've never I've never heard of anyone doing that before. Uh, the con uh, the contained stamina is represented by a UI element above the teammate that is currently pressing. I see. Player personality is what determines how close the teammates get to the ball carrier while containing, their urgency to do so, the amount of contained stamina they have, and also the duration of the cooldown to recover the stamina. The attributes that dictate these values are defensive awareness, defensive work rates, and remaining in-match stamina. The goal for teammate contain is that someone like a world-class defensive midfielder is more effective and reliable at closing down opponents. Someone like Fred! For Man United. <laughs> uh, and then attackers, for example, who might be focused more on offensive duties. Okay, so that is like a total... A total difference there. Wow. Okay, well, we'll see how that pans out. All right, players switching. In FIFA 22, we wanted to improve or to provide players with even more ways to switch as players can have different priorities when switching. We've added four new options, including icon switching and player rotation. See, they've added so much stuff. There's a lot of stuff. This is why the pitch notes are good. You can see this. So, icon switching. This is a new form of switching that provides players with a surefire way to select their desired player. The, to activate icon switching, we'll press R3 while defending, and you will see UI elements above four of your players, each with specific direction, like in the image below. Ah, so it's like a... Um, you know, NBA games, when you used to press like L1 and there was like icons over their heads, you press that button and it switches to that player. So after pressing R3, you can flick the right stick and the switch will that happen. I, <laughs> I like that. I, I really do because the biggest annoyance is trying to change to the right player. So if you can press R3 and suddenly just flick and it changes to that player... I'm a little bit I'm a little bit lost for words for that. I, I didn't expect that. That's a that's a big one. And that's what she said. Blimey. Alright. There is also an option in controller settings to disable it. So you can turn it off. Once again, they're thinking outside the box of not just leaving it on. If you don't like it, you can turn it off. But there it is. You can see you can go left for him, right for him, up for him, and down for him. And you're controlling this one player. So a quick flick. Um, and, and, and that's smart, using uh, the right stick to flick, because trying to press a button obviously would mess things up. All right, well, let me know what you guys think about that. Th that is different. I was not expecting that. Um, and it's stuff like that they didn't mention in the trailer, so there are a lot more for, for, for Konami... Not Konami. For, for EA to show. All right, so more switching options. Player rotation, a new option for the right stick, allowing you to move to the next player. That's what we kind of saw. Uh, once you're satisfied with your choice, press manual switch LB or, or L1. Uh, the movement of the indicator is based on its current positioning. Auto switching. In addition to air balls and loose balls switching, we've added two new options. One for only on air balls and one for only on loose balls. So auto switching now has five different ways to function. Bosh. There you go. Directional clearances and technical clearances. Blimey, this is a long one, folks, isn't it? They don't mess about with the pitch notes. So they've got directional clearances. Uh, is a new default option for clearances with ball tra uh, trajectory. Now following the left stick input as much as they can. While still trying to perform the earliest contact with the ball, these clearances still have an assistance in some specific cases, like when aiming at your own goal, uh, other players, or when in very urgent situations. For reference, classic clearances do not take into consideration your left stick input and power, and your players will try to perform the first available contact in any direction. All right, and there it is. There's the option. I mean, there's going to be a lot of settings in this game, folks. Core cool, blimey. Uh, technical clearances. All right. Okay. I, I can't keep... It's such a long one, isn't it? Come on, blimey. Uh, more tactics and instruction customization. 
So besides the new attacking tactics mentioned earlier, we made additional changes to tactics and new instructions to further customize your playstyle. Depth and width sliders now range from 1 to 100, allowing for more um, customization, nuanced customizations. There it is, you can you can do minuscule little customization thingy-majiggities. Free roam instructions for CDMs allow for a deep lying playmaker role coming closer to support the ball handler and also dropping deeper to receive a pass during possession or build up. Um, and then you've got the step up instruction for centre backs and full backs can now have them step out of position and mark opposing attackers tighter when they are free to receive the ball. Hmm, okie dokie. And uh, you've got the overlap instruction. So there you go. All right, across the pitch. We're nearly getting there, folks. We're nearly getting there. As I said, time stamps will be available. Uh, bigger goal moments. So building on the big goal moments, we've increased the number of scenes. Let's just roll this so you guys can watch it. Um, you can experience new crowd moments, camera angles, opponents, captain reactions, and unique player celebrations. I mean, this is always great fun, isn't it? I mean, I've never had an issue with FIFA's presentation. It's always been quality. Um, and as you can see, Polisic scores the goal, goes absolutely balmy. But it's just real life reactions. Crowd going crazy. Players coming across. And uh, there is Timo Werner. Hang on. Did Werner look like he had a pair of sunglasses on there for a minute? What was that all about? <laughs> That's the. That was his hair. I th that was his. Uh, yeah, that was his hair. Woo! I thought he had a pair of sunglasses on. Uh, player movement. So they've made a number of changes for player movement and speed. Right, so they've increased the maximum top speed. This change more closely mirrors real life speed of professional football athletes, and it requires players to run for longer to reach their max or their new max speed. Okay, so you've got to run a little bit longer to get a little bit faster. Uh, this change also positively affects lower speed players as they are slightly faster in smaller spaces than before. However, they will still be slower on performing long distance runs. Okay, so if you're slower, you'll have a little bit, you, you'll get to your, your top speed faster, of course. Whereas if you're a quicker player, you've got a little bit more time to, to reach uh, the max potential. Control deacceleration. Some players with higher attributes can deaccelerate faster when transitioning onto a dribble or trapping the ball. Only players with the agility, ball control, and dribbling attributes equal to or greater than 80 are eligible for that. Uh, we've got new star player movement, added new visuals for a few players when moving in certain conditions, such as Phil Foden when sprinting and Sun Hun Hin when dribbling. Uh, assigned avatar running styles to over 50 players, resulting in their movements being close to real life, including Pulisic. Uh, and we've obviously seen Haaland as well. Um, so, you know, that player ID is always a positive. Nothing wrong with that. Keep adding every single year. Right, set pieces. We've made several set piece improvements. All right, so let's have a look. Visual changes on next gen. Um, the free kick wall visuals have been refreshed with the intent of making players feel more lively, um, conscious of the game's context, context uh, and to noticeably track the ball. Uh, refresh of free kick and penalty kick animations. David Beckham free kicks added a unique animation to replicate the iconic technique of Mr. David Beckham. If you're in America, you call him Beckham. Uh, the other character, the other character, that's not right. The other character, the other category of set piece improvements focus on uh, mechanics. Hang on, quick free kick. Um, hold R2 during a, free, a quick free kick to hang on to it for a few more seconds to give your teammates more time. Hmm. Okay, I like the sound of that. Throw-in improvements, more intelligent throw-ins. Uh, consider the position of opponents, resulting in more accuracy and possession retention. Uh, you've got co-op changes set piece user. The player in charge of taking the free kick can now press R3, L3 uh, to let the other co-op players take the free kick. Alrighty. And you've got earlier call for short pass push-up. R1 or L1 or and L1 can now be pressed before the goal kick starts, having the players already start in their desired positions. There you go, a little bit quicker. And then you've got free kick accuracy, uh, increased shot accuracy and free kicks, especially when applying a lots of spin or side spin during the free kick. So I mean, words are going now, folks, because I've been talking for about 45 minutes and uh, my mouth's knackered. 
Right, CPU AI. So the CPU AI is a very important area of gameplay. Of course, it's probably one of the biggest if you're playing career mode, of course. Um, and not just that. The, the player awareness and all on, on your team has to be smart. Uh, with a lot of FIFA players focusing on career mode and foot squad battles. So, for players who like a challenge, we rewrote Defending Competitor Mode CPU AI with something we call Threat-Based Defending, with the CPU better understanding who the players they should mark are, which off-the-ball runs they should chase, and which dribblers they should close down. Um, with Threat-Based Defending, Competitor Mode is more challenging than before. To not be left behind, we are also tuning the attacking moves with Space-Based Attacking, uh, this allows the competitor mode CPU AI to have a better understanding of spaces and when to perform dribbles and passes, including performing killer through balls or bending precise crosses in the box. So there we go. Then you've got player based difficulty is a new setting uh, when playing against the AI. This The idea is that when you play against a team like PSG, Mbappe really stands out. Uh, as being a more dangerous player. Well, yeah, of course, due to his abilities and attributes. Similarly, if the opposition team is starting a low-rated player among a team of high-rated ones, they will be easier to tackle and dribble past. Makes sense. All right, anything else worth looking at here? We've got physical play. Another area of focus is obviously the physicality of players. Uh, increase the strength attribute impact and emphasize strength differentiation. Blimey, these words. Uh, between players when involved in physical play, we've added more intelligent stumbles and falls to avoid inauthentic outcomes and to produce fairer results after being tackled or slipping. You've got the pass shot and tackle back improvements. Alrighty, uh, FIFA attributes here. We've increased the FIFA attributes that were introduced last year for kickoff, uh, online seasons and online friendlies. So these attributes are modified depending on each player's positions and as you guys can see, um, I'm not going to read that out for you. Right, additional changes as we finish this up. Uh, some other FIFA 22 changes we wanted to highlight include um, next gen. Net physics will have more visual um, elasticity, spring and shake. Very nice. We all have some good net physics, um, which when combined with PlayStation 5 haptic feedback and audio cues can make goals feel more impactful. Oh, that's something I did forget, isn't it? The PlayStation 5 haptic feedback. I absolutely love the PS5 controller. I think it's the best best PlayStation controller we've had by a mile. I mean, the whole debate of Xbox versus PS5. I'm a PS5 guy or a PlayStation guy. I've always enjoyed that controller. And the haptic feedback, yeah, I'm sure it will give you a good sense when you do bang one in. Increased consistency and accuracy of assisted headers in modes that they can be used in. They've got multiple new celebrations. We continue to add star-specific celebrations as well. Um, additionally, there are some other areas uh, that will be introduced. Gameplay perks for career mode and pro clubs. And Volta Football with the skill meter and signature ability. Um, and then to better respond to some feedback during uh, the FIFA cycle, we've worked hard on a feature that took a significant effort from multiple teams. We call it the Live Tuning Tool. Hmm. In FIFA 22, we can work on some aspects of the gameplay through the live tuning tool and roll out changes to players um, without requiring a full title update. This can allow us to make tuning changes mm, very much like eFootball. Basically, that's what it is. They've said they're going to do that. They're going to put out patches and stuff without putting a full game out. And of course, eFootball's going that route. So that's, uh, that's pretty smart stuff. And uh, that is basically it, ladies and gentlemen. So I have to say... Yes, I've slagged FIFA off. Yes, I do it all the time. Yes, I moan and I'm negative. But I would have to say, going through this, reading up about, you know, the the flicking of changing, switching players sounds really cool. The videos I saw, the animations look very smooth. On a whole, I will say this does look like the most positive FIFA we are going to get yet. Just going by what I've read and I've seen, I don't know, I haven't played it, time will tell. Uh, but even like the gameplay we saw at the beginning, um, and I'm going to end the video there because, you know, I've been going on and on and on. It's a long video. It's nearly an hour. Call cool, blimey. But this, it just looks way better, doesn't it? The players holding the positions, you know, the way he gets the ball down right here. Very, I mean, I love that animation there. That is probably some of the smoothest, that really is probably some of the smoothest, you know, touchdown animations I've seen in a football game. And that's against Pez. So... 
yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to it. When the game comes out or demo comes out, we'll definitely be giving it a bash. Let me know your thoughts below. I try to keep it positive, folks, and I think I did a pretty good job, but I'm just being honest. If I see something I don't like, I'll tell you. Uh, and if I like something, I'll tell you too. Anyway, until next time, subscribe for more. We'll be back with Master League next video. Till next time, take care.